line that I collect from local fishermen when it's at the end of its life and it's not accepted at recycling facilities here anyway so there's not much that they can do with it this is my favorite stuff right here this kind of blue blue green but I like the orange too it's good for sunsets and stuff got purple that's I like that a lot what happens is fishermen lose traps so they either, you know, it's not where they left it, somebody stole it, um, or they, uh, it gets picked up by a big storm and ripped down the coast. So when whales come in to feed like they were today, uh, in the inshore environment, they get wrapped. And uh, we have a local disentanglement team that goes out with specialty knives and pops them off. Uh, but it's, it's oftentimes, it's out of sight, out of mind. So, People don't know about it, and the whales end up drowning. Usually to make these bigger pieces, I, I have to kind of go to the source, um, at least in California. We don't have as much of a, of a uh, marine debris issue. Yeah. We have a lot of small stuff here, which personally, I don't work with as much. Uh, but there's no shortage of small material. If you go to Ocean Beach right now, you're gonna find tons of small stuff this big. But uh, working on Oahu, different story. There's my friends in Stable Coastlands Hawaii pick up, you know, that, that, it, that's nothing, you know? So it really is a, a regional difference. And so here, I kind of try to intercept it before it goes to the landfill or gets illegally discarded at sea, which people do. Um, so that's, that's my California routine. In Hawaii, I'll get it off the beach. I haven't shot a nail through myself yet. Every piece has a couple thousand nails in it. Well, this is a small one, so not too many, but. My background is, is actually primarily in environmental science. I studied that in undergrad and masters at Stanford. And the cool thing about that program was it was interdisciplinary. So they let me take art classes and mechanical engineering kind of on the side while I was studying ocean science basically. That was pretty lucky because it kept me making stuff and ultimately I did a lot of work as a marine biologist, I still do, but nowadays I'm mostly making art because that's kind of where I want to be. Uh, I enjoy the communication element, whereas science is kind of insular and you don't really, you know, you publish a research paper on tuna and 30 people read it and they already kind of know what it's going to say. So I like art because you can reach a bigger audience and uh, tell a story that might get somebody to change their behavior in regards to the ocean. When I graduated college, all I really wanted to do was drive to Chile in a van and surf the whole way. And that was my plan. But I ended up getting a job offer from the Monterey Bay Aquarium to study bluefin tuna and, you know, study their conservation and biology. So I was like, oh, like. I ended up taking the job and I'm glad I did. I got a lot of good experience studying fish all around the world, Mexico, Japan, Nova Scotia. It was great, but uh, and I still do that work. I work in Japan every summer studying bluefin, 
which is kind of where the inspiration for for these pieces came from just being kind of sitting in a Japanese fishing village nobody's speaking English really small islands and uh, not a lot to do no waves so I kind of just walked around picked up trash off the beaches and lots of rope and I also visited a lot of local temples and started paying attention to the wood carvings and the patterns that were kind of a typical Japanese iconography or classical and I decided I wanted to try and weave those things together. The trash I found on the beach and these traditional beautiful Japanese representations of water. And that's what I brought into my Oshio series. I've made maybe 30 pieces like this so far. And I'm still trying to refine the technique, but uh, it's trying to make something that's beautiful, but references the mm, need for improvement on recycling and uh, of commercial fishing gear.